Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a specially scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Uh, if we could call to order at 735. I don't know where the frog's coming from in my throat. Maybe they'll give up before the meeting is over. <coughs> that said, we have a single agenda item tonight, and it's a second interview uh, with uh, Angie Lopez Ellison, Lopes Ellison, and um, to bring you as well as people who are, may or watch now or in real time or in the future up to date, uh, we had three second interviews. You're the third. The goal is to go through the second interviews, and we have a regularly scheduled meeting on Monday. It's an agenda item on Monday to uh, discuss, deliberate it in, in, in a public format so that we can maybe uh, uh, decide on a candidate and begin the offer and that whole next stage of our process of filling the town administrator's position. So. Thanks so much for taking the time and driving in. It's not snowing. It's not icy. So you got it, you know. Yeah, I actually love driving, so. It would be in good shape. So we have about a dozen questions. Some of them are follow-up from the first interview. Some of them are, are um, a, a deeper dive on the subject matter of the first line of questions. And then uh, feel free. You can interact, ask questions back and forth, and uh, we'll save time at the end. You can really grill us at that point, okay? All right. Thanks so much again for coming in tonight. And you want to go? Sure. Yep. Good evening, Angie. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, All right. Um, Angie, in what type of work environment do you thrive? Um, one that is definitely um, cooperative. Um, one that is team-oriented. Um, one that is supportive. Um, and one that is also engaging. Uh, I, I sort of also add to the other aspect, challenging. Um, I don't like to come in and do things because they're easy, you know, the routine uh, of the position, but also I'd like to sometimes, in t particularly in this position, to be challenged to sort of think outside of the scope. I know you guys were talking about it, you know, earlier in regards to um, the art of conversation and listening, you know, being able to be from one spectrum to the other. I want to be able to be challenged so that if I have an idea and thought or direction to move the board, the town, and help move forward, that it can be guided and moved and be challenged as well. So I can look at sort of the issues from all different perspectives and have the answers. So I want to follow up. If I could, yep. Dave and Scott, yep. Scott, or Dave yep. and Scott. <laughs> Spectrum. So, so <laughs> Angie, would, would you consider it a town administrator's <clears throat> job to ensure that the selectmen looked at the full breadth of a subject? From So, so let's say that I, I, I think sometimes we've been lucky that one of us has always been able to um, throw in a devil's advocate dis for discussion sure. point. Mm -hmm. But if you saw that not occurring, would you think it's up, would be part of a job responsibility of the town administrator to, to throw that point out there to get it into the discussion? I, I wouldn't want to say it's part of a town administrator's job responsibility, but it would be upon me and my style of management, and my style of um, working in this position. I, in my previous two positions, I have provided information to the board, and I have said this is my recommendation. These are the direction that I think you should move towards, mm -hmm. and these are the obstacles that I foresee. But here are the other options you may have. And that's what, I, and because some of those decisions are not mine to make. And I have to be able to provide you that information to be able to make those sound decisions. I will definitely, I mean, if there's a position in a direction that I think would be best suited for the town and or the vision and goals that you have established for the town, I will gear you towards that. Um, but I will also say, you know, the, I'm trying to think of something relative to uh, 
that, that sort of lack of controversy, but um, whether to buy a fire truck, or, you know, mm -hmm. um, instead of getting, you know, now they're making it with the foam, the expander foam, so you don't have to use water. So if I was to, the, I would advocate for that the fire chief and I'd give you all of the information. They were advocating for this issue. These are all of the positives. These are some of the concerns we have. This is the cost. This is how we'll finance it. Uh, we looked at different, you know, bond ratings. These are the rates and so on and so forth. This is the direction I would guide the boards to elect to go, but also understand that if you do go in this direction, here is the other option with the other fire truck that's bigger has more capacity, can hold more water, sometimes you can't use the foam on electricity. So giving you, you need to make that decision, although I am in 100% favor on one direction. Okay, thank you very much. Excuse me, <clears throat> sorry, getting over a cold here. That kind of leads into uh, actually the next question. How would you describe your management style overall? Um, <clears throat> it's very situational. Uh, I, I can't, I, I mean, I have a, a style that I favor, and it's, you know, collaboration and, and sort of democratic. Let's all sit down, let's all talk about it, let's all try to figure out how to move the issue, the problem, the concern. But it's really situational, because there's certain times and certain situations, especially in municipal government, that I need to just make a decision. I, I don't have time or the ability to sit and try to understand where everybody's coming from and what the issues are. You know, l little things that aren't going to impact the entire community and the entire town. Mm -hmm. um, there are some, I, I guess, in regards to supervision and overseeing folks, some people respond better to a management style that is very much, you know, deadline oriented or very much um, laissez-faire, you know, just tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. You know, in the same way and same aspect, I'm sure you guys will manage me based on not only the style that you prefer, but also what works for me. Uh, and I'll tell you right away, I'm very deadline oriented. Tell me something needs to be here, you know, oh, get it done. As you know, with municipal government, so everything will take priority, but if you tell me it needs to be done on this date, you'll have it a few days before that. Um, so it, it's very situational. Um, uh, but I, I, I definitely tend to favor a collaborative democratic process. Okay. Uh, rather, you know, laissez faire, you're not giving anybody direction or guidance and you know, autocratic. No. You know, I, I think uh, there's a quote that Jefferson said. You know, it's great that you could lead until you turn around and see that no one's following. Yeah. Okay. Great you know? point. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Great point. <sighs> Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, jump down a few and talk. Uh, since you mentioned uh, making decisions, what's the biggest decisions you you've had to make in the past year, and why was it <clears throat> so big? This is in a professional format. Professional framework. Excuse me. Um, I think. One is, and it sort of it ties into a somewhat personal, but personal in a professional capacity, was making the decision to resign mm -hmm. um, my position um, in Uxbridge. Um, I contemplated it for an extended period, um, and it it took a lot to get to that point, and it took a lot to make that decision but once I made the decision um, and you know mutually uh, worked it out with the board um, we, we were able to come up with an agreement that worked um, but I think that was one of the most actually mo one of the most difficult professional decisions because I've, I've on a personal level I felt like I, I, and I say it, and again, you guys will, will get to know that I'm very open and honest, um, I, but I felt as if I failed. Mm. Um, and that has never been my place to go to. Uh, you know, I always try to resolve problems, fix things, and I just wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't able to, to, to move forward. Make that one work. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank, thanks so much. <clears throat> Angie, 
how do you evaluate people for the question reads promotion um, but in in our small town we sometimes you can't I think it developed from from the word promotion to um, allowing or giving someone more responsibility so mm -hmm. so how do you evaluate people for promotion slash additional responsibility and if possible could you give an example um yeah one is having a, a working relationship with them you know you need to be able to constantly know <clears throat> what their areas of strength what areas they need to improve um what skill sets did do they want to develop on a professional level? What skill sets are they shying away from? Because sometimes, too, and you know, I talked about a little bit in regards to challenges, uh, you want to challenge a, a someone, a staff member, to, it, it's sort of like the Montessori process. You know, you tend to go to the thing that you are most strongest at or that you favor. So I'm of the belief you'll always go to that and you'll always be professional and excel in that aspect so why not look at the areas that you have less of an inclination and or need more uh, development to work on that being said um, I would definitely so, so I, I work in an, my mind works in analogies and examples so if say the um, accountant wants to develop in their career goal and path and you know we're meeting and talking um, they want to be a finance director at some point so I would work with them in trying to not only uh, work in the accounting field but after, give them some abilities and or expose them to the treasury side because the, the finance it involves all aspects um, work with the assessors um, work on a project work in you know, a collaboration with different pieces of it and move in that direction if someone you know and I don't know that you guys have a planner but you know you have a planning board if some someone professionally is interested in development and or planning and moving in that direction it's sort of asking them to work in that piece of it you know we did it in higher education I was interested in in finance I worked in student affairs I would never in the duration of my time in student affairs ever be exposed to municipal financing but I you know I, I worked there I volunteered I sat on committees to be able to get the financial piece and background to be able to do that. So I would mimic that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also see what that person wanted as a career goal. I mean, because in I think oftentimes professionally, especially for those that are, I don't want to say high achievers, but that are constantly trying to achieve, you forget that there's people that are just content coming to work, doing their job, and going home. So I, you know, I don't want to push a person into a, a, a position of trying to be better or more than if they're like, no, I'm good. You know, I, I just want to collect my paycheck because that's their motivation. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. I've always wondered, you, <clears throat> you watch on a, go by a road construction site and you see one group of guys, um, one group of people that with, with shovels and then you see another group of people that are inside the trucks and the excavators and then you see, and it's like, do the people with shovels want to be, aspire to, and sometimes they don't. Right, right. Sometimes they and, don't. And sometimes the equipment operators, they, they don't want to be supervisors. They're, they're happy just moving dirt around. So it's, it's an interesting yeah. point that you made. Thank you. Um, this one's sort of a follow-up on that. Like, um, <clears throat> how, how do you mentor employees? And like, just kind of give a couple examples of that. Because it's a little different than the, you know. Yeah, um, mentoring is a, a <clears throat> it's one of those keywords. Everybody wants to be a mentor, but not everyone is a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, you mentor someone by initially establishing a relationship. Um, one of the things that I, I think is funny is like someone will, you know, town manager or someone wants to be, you know, I want to be mentored by you. You have to have a personal relationship, a professional connection to make that and hope that the person who wants to grow and develop in that aspect. So 
for me, in this position, if I was to mentor anyone within the position, I would definitely try to establish a relationship with them, uh, develop trust. And then also, as I had mentioned with the previous question, you know, what is it that they want to they want to do? What is it that you're looking to get access to? Do you need to go to a workshop for MMA? Uh, you know, how, there's so many professional organizations within municipal government that I can bring you workshops to. Um, if it's HR and human development, um, that's another option. So um, just giving them the information and the education. Um, and understand too that they're working while trying to establish and get this other position and taking that into okay. consideration. Uh, you know, you can't say, you know, I want you to work 40 hours and then here's another 10 hours of mentorship or development stuff sure. that you need to do. Mm -hmm. There has to be a nice balance, and people who tend to want to do mentorship pro type programs and or uh, want to develop their career finds that balance. Uh, they, you know, they, they, they definitely would would excel in that aspect. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to flip the page. I'm going to the other <laughs> side. Yeah. That's all right. Um, uh, looking back, what could you have done to make a bad workplace relationship better? And has the relationship changed your previous strategy? Hmm. That's all I get. So yeah, yeah, yeah right, right, right. Here it goes. Looking back, what could you have done to make a bad workplace relationship better? And has that relationship changed your previous strategy? So not a situation. Hmm. Like I said, relationship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, read that one more time. You got it. Looking, looking back, what could you have done to make a bad workplace relationship better? And has that relationship changed your previous strategy? I would say for me, it would definitely have been understanding a community first. Um, before implementing change, mm -hmm. um, understanding what their priorities are um, prior to trying to, you know, because in my mind I know what works. Sure, <laughs> sure, right, right. Uh, you know, I, I've seen it in the professional uh, field and, and sort of, but it's not necessarily what worked in community A will work in community B. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and so um, understanding the community. Um, I don't know that I've had, I, I, I sort of hesitate, I was going to say I don't know that I've had a bad individual relationship, mm -hmm. but I've had people that I've supervised right. that have said that I've set high expectations or, you know, but it, my philosophy is so much that if I set high expectations, and you come here, right. it's more than you are expecting of yourself here. Good point, yeah. um, so uh, that aspect of, mm. um, you know, I in the sort of sideline, I do the same thing with my kids. You know, they're like, we, we can never go, we're, like, we're, you know, high expect, I'm like, yeah, but look when you achieve right. what you achieve. Right, having set that bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great point. Thanks so much. Scott, if I could add on that. Sure. A Andy, one, one other thing that, you, that you, the term you use, supervise, is an interesting term to me. Um, can, can you help describe the difference between a supervisor and a manager? Hmm. Um, well, so the, the, it's, I guess in organizational leadership, you start off supervision, management, and then uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's progressive. Supervision, I think, is sort of the, the beginning part of it, uh, making sure people are doing their work, um, meeting deadlines, um, being able to get the job done of what they're expected, um, you know, sort of, I guess, adding to it is doing evaluations, all of those aspects are sort of supervision. This is what your job says, this is what we need to do, we need to move you forward. 
Um, management takes it, again, the supervision aspect to a different level in a more um, rounded aspect in regards to, well, then you add in the career path, then you add some of the problem solving uh, issues. But, you know, management also for me takes into account some of the other responsibilities and some other factors because in managing a, a department and or a, an area, you, you know, how is it going to affect the community? How is this decision going to be received by the planning board and or some of the, you know, will it affect another one of the regional partnerships that we have? So you need to look at it bigger in that aspect. Um, and then the next level is leadership and saying, well, this is the direction we're going to. So all of these elements underneath need to move forward in that piece of it. And what can we put in structurally to be able to get us to that vision? Hmm. Thank you. Um, what has prepared you for this position, and how have you prepared yourself? <laughs> it's funny. I, I, I was at a uh, at a at a hiring thing today at work. I'm on a committee that hired, and one of the things is um, we make the person, the three finalists, um, prepare a, a presentation um, and, and basically in other title, why, for them, it's why me. Yeah, yeah. And they have to sell us, so they give a presentation about why me. Yeah. And the guy sitting there, to start, the, the gentleman that started off looked at his president and go, boy, that doesn't look good up there on that screen, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I go, not really. But. That, that's what we asked you to do. Yeah, yeah. So that's anyway, right. <laughs> so um, but what what have you done to prepare yourself for this position, and um, how have you prepared? Yeah. Well, I think it sort of goes back to our first interview in, in regards to I I've come full circle. My undergrad degree and my graduate work is on you know political science and American studies, with the aspiration of you know I was going to work in government, go to the law school, and do all of the, the the pieces associated with that. But what I had done as extracurricular activity in college ended up t taking the forefront in how I ended up in higher education. Um, I've consistently. Um, been actively involved in my community. Um, my again, my two degrees, um, and I just completed my um, master certificate from the MMA Suffolk University um, master's in program for um, local government. Um, I would, and I'm sort of contemplating um, wanting to complete that degree program through Suffolk because um, it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to um, get an MPA from Suffolk. Um, my extensive, you know, I, I've had, I've worked with, I, I was on the school committee in my town, I was on the board of selectmen, and so I understand municipal government. Um, I go to the professional development opportunities, like I have said, uh, relative to the MMA. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to join the ICMA, um, but that's another professional, um, well, it's, it's probably national uh, organization that is the professional affiliation for uh, municipal government. Um, so I, I stay current and active. Um, I, I maintain some of my relationships with some um, senior, retired, um, former town managers. Um, I have a great relationship with um, some of the folks in Boston in the State House uh, as well. So um, I, I think, I, I mean, relative to being fully academic in aspects and regional, uh, I've, I've met it, you know, I, I hate, I know it's an interview and I'm sort of like, I hesitate because I like I start because it's, I'm supposed to sell myself, yeah. but one of the things that I have a hard time is doing is selling myself because I really feel like I work as part of a team. Um, that's, that's a good answer. It's okay with that. <laughs> okay. Thank you.
All right. So, <clears throat> assuming that you'd start this new position at the town of the at the start of the town's annual budget process, um, take us through how you'd um, go through that process and how you envision it. <clears throat> well, um, your town meeting's in April. Correct. Yeah. Starting town budget process in January is a little late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we feel uh, the pressure too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first and foremost is trying to, for me, if I was the successful candidate in coming in, I would have to look at all of your former um, budgets. I, I would go back probably five years, um, get in touch with Division of Local Services to see. Uh, I, even when I was looking at some of your finances, um, you know, you, in one of my questions is in regards to free cash because it, you typically have about 300, 400,000, but there was a couple of years that it yep. spiked. Yep. Um, and I was just, and I'll ask it, I guess, at yep. the question and answer period, but sort of looking at what is your strategic plan for your know, finances. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's to incur free cash, then I could, you know, adjust the budget to reflect that and be more conservative in regards to allocations and revenue resources, so that way you get more free cash at the end of the year. Um, but, so, that, that, that aside, so I would definitely um, look at those aspects. I would start meeting with department heads. Um, I would, <coughs> first and foremost, treasurer and um, the accountant. Mm -hmm. um, there's certain aspects of the unclassifieds that, you know, it's there but nobody has uh, any accountability to that you need to uh, make sure you account for in the budget process. Um, working to, um, with some of the other departments to establish revenue. Um, you know, there's not a lot of building, so you're not going to get a lot of stuff from building aspect and, and but just getting um, the assessors as well and, and getting those pieces put in initially to see how much revenue you have um, I don't the state typically doesn't release uh, the cherry sheet till March or, um, so, or so yeah yeah, yeah or so you know, well whatever depends if it's yeah. election yeah. year <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> right because <Yep. laughs> they actually you know the governor will go to the MMA and make this big announcement if it's an election year if it's mm -hmm. not you don't see him um, but um, trying to get <coughs> the, the, those funding and, and putting it all together um, having worked in a larger community with a big budget I, I and I don't want to minimize your budget but it's it, it it's a sim simple in that the numbers are easy to manage. You know, there's nothing tricky uh, relative to what you have here um, that would challenge it. Um, I would also, after getting all of the information in, in the process and the direction, I would, you know, start to meet with the finance committee, meet with you guys to get more direction and goals. Um, you know, do the if you've approved pay increases for the staff, establish those and move those forwards and um, working it with the proposition two and a half equation and coming up with the tax rate and working with the assessors. Um, so it, it's a process, but it's it, not to rush you guys because you, you know. You no, have, we're already behind, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we usually start in like November or so. Like, yeah, you need to, yeah. It, it becomes more challenging as it moves forward, which I guess if I'm going to plug myself, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. sooner That's than plug. later. No. Plug. <laughs> See, she knows how to sell. Exactly it. right. Exactly right. That's funny. Uh, a similar question, mm -hmm. broader. Uh, so, strategies you would employ for addressing areas you consider challenges in a town administrator's role. Strategies for strategies you would employ for addressing areas that you consider challenges if you're hired as a town as the Sunderland's town administrator. Um, my biggest thing is research. <clears throat> you know, the, the one of my mentors, and he, he has since passed away, um, had told me, you know, every single municipality does it does the same thing. It's how. Right. And so it's just figuring out the how of Sunderland um, and being able to, what is it that is going to work here? 
uh, how is that going to play out, you know, um, if we're doing, you, you know, I have my MCPPO certification mm -hmm. and if we're doing construction or wanting to do design phases, you know, how does that play out here? How involved does the board want to be in that process? What do I need to present? If it's something I don't know, I do my research. I find out what other communities are doing, similar in size, or bigger or smaller, to have a comparison um, and be able to give you the best information possible. Makes sense. Great, thanks. Appreciate it. Angie, uh, please describe your previous experience with interacting managing a diverse community volunteer group with a divergent agenda and the goal of gaining consensus <laughs> i've had experience in uh, multiple aspects of it um it, I, I guess the outcome or a sort of a, i'll paraphrase if it's something that needs to be done quickly the consensus building is a little different than something that is sort of project-based. Um, so if it's something that, like literally, we need to sit down in a room, everybody needs to tell me pros and cons, we work it out, um, we work the issues out, what are the concerns, what are the benefits, how do we move forward, and you know, initially when we first starting is let people talk let them voice their opinion, go through the process of getting their thoughts out, their ideas out, um, so in trying to convince others of a direction in moving forward. So you, that's one piece of it. If it's project-based, uh, I do have a model that I use um, in getting uh, concepts into measurable outcomes. And so you start with the concept, what does that mean to you? What is it? How do you move forward? And then everybody, the brainstorming. You put the whole thing on a board. Um, and then afterwards, you give them like little dots or a checklist. Everybody gets to do five. What's your priority in each of the sections that we're trying to work? And then whatever the most votes gets that those five issues moved on to the next stage. The next stage then becomes, well, if we're doing these as, these five issues as priorities, what does it look like if we've succeeded? And then you start the brainstorm. So you get it down, 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 until you get it to manageable outcomes. Um, and, and that typically has been successful in consensus building because you're taking the emotional piece out of it and it becomes more project oriented. Sure. Um, but you know, pro a, a quick project, you, you, you have to take a different approach. <coughs> this is sort of a, a counterpoint to one of the earlier questions. In, in your professional life, what's given you the most satisfaction over the years? <clears throat> oh, gosh. Well, it's easy to get to, like, the, the, the tough questions. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What gives you great satisfaction in your professional life? Um, but, My ability to, and my dis, just to be able to move through, I don't want to say all phases, like I, I'm never, I always need to be learning something new, you know, I, I actually, I'll sort of take you guys a little bit, my daughter had to do a project for school, and one of her questions that she asked me was, when, when are you, when do, are you content, or are you content? Mm. And I said, that's a, you know, and I couldn't answer the question for her. She goes, Mom, aren't you content now? I said, No, because if you're content, that means you're complacent. Like you're okay to be where you are. I said, You know, I'm happy, but I'm never content with what I'm at. I always strive to go someplace else and learn something else, do something else, and and, and challenge myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a hard one because every aspect of my career, even the shortcomings, I think has been a wonderful experience because I've gotten something out of them. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned a lot from you know the the the, the greatest learning um, happens with the greatest fall. 
Um, so, um, you know, there's, there's a lot to be learned in every aspect of, uh, you know, and that's a life philosophy, I guess, and not necessarily yep. a professional well, philosophy. Sorry. That applies to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, okay. I'm... Yeah, thank I know you. I really didn't answer. I sort of took it in. A it's okay. Day. That's all right. Thanks. <clears throat> I used to work with a guy who said there's a fine line between apathy and complacency. And one day you simply wake up and go, oh, right, I did that for that long. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Scott used to work for Aristotle. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Phil, right? Exactly. Yeah. Phil was very, very good. <coughs> he was, uh, he was, he was, he was quite, a, he was quite a character. Quite a, he was a mentor as well. But it was a very interesting line. So you come to work one day and you look back and go, huh? That's apathy. Yeah. Yeah. Avoid that at all costs. I said, thanks, Phil. <laughs> um, Anyway, well, one um, of my mentors, which I actually take pride in, is that she would always say when I first came out in the field in higher ed, she's like, "My job as a mentor is to teach you how to do my job." Right. Right. Oh yeah. You know, and that's how I've always worked, and yep. I always try to get people learn more. Learn more. Yep. I've had, this, I've had the distinct pleasure of making myself obsolete at two different facilities yeah. and gone. <laughs> My work's done. It's all yeah, good. Exactly. Thanks yeah, so much. Yeah. It's all good. Anyway, sorry, that was tangential. Really? Um, obsolete? Obsolete. Then I asked what kind of contractor you're going to be. As. I, 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 I thought I always thought you were the only person I knew that could nail Jello to a tree. Well, that's true. <laughs> what? Nail Jello to a tree. <laughs> Uh, Are you an engineer by trade? <laughs> no, I, I, I am a tradesman, but not a jello tradesman. <laughs> we, we used to talk about it. I, I, this is really tangential yeah. now. I used to work with a welder who was a code welder. He said he could he could weld two flavors of jello when you couldn't find the joint. Oh, uh, that's very good. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh. Sorry, we were really down the hole quickly there. Um, <laughs> and thank you for allowing us that. Uh, if, if you could discuss a time uh, when you had a major project objective, tight time constraint, limited resources, how did you overcome the challenges to achieve the necessary outcome? Hmm. And let's not talk about Sunderland's budget starting in January. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in all seriousness, it's sort of um, when I was in uh, Oxbridge, um, there was a mass exodus of staff. Um, I couldn't get any professional uh, folks to come in because the salary was so low. Um, and trying to move and, and resolve those issues while still in the process of a budget because they had they had passed a budget but not enough to be able to mm. move some of the funding. Um, and I think I had alluded to it last time mm -hmm. um, with Division of Local Services coming in. So the resources, I, I used sure. the resources that were around um, the state, um, locally, um, you know, a couple of the, the sort of getting a, a team together with the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, um, to try to see if we could resolve some of the issues. And we hadn't probably tried to get weekly meetings established to just look through those processes. Once town meeting was through, everybody could, because we had to do a special town meeting. Uh, it, th their town meetings both are in, so they have two town meetings per year, so it's in the uh, charter to have two town meetings. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to do it in time for this. You get through meeting. one catch your breath, oh, start yeah, preparing yeah. for the next you're one. You're constantly getting ready for town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And then doing all the other stuff that you do. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, thanks so much. Appreciate that. Okay. It's your turn. We're going to put our pens down, and you get to ask us the questions. Oh, gee. Well, one of the things that I, I guess I, it's not so much a question initially that I wanted to um, sort of say, I do a lot of reflecting, you know, mm -hmm. after this I'll go home and reflect on the entire process, and I did that after our last meet, um, our first meeting, but the last time we were together, um, is just letting you know that, you know, I, I Interviewing is difficult for me because, like I said, I work it as a team approach. It's like I don't do anything, and maybe that might be my higher education background. But 
I have the skill sets and the ability and have had the experience to be able to do this position um, and would welcome the opportunity to be able to do it here and, and help you guys move, you know, the next phase um, in, in your process as well as a community. Um, so I, I wanted to put it out there and sort of, I'm open and honest and very transparent and I hope that, and I, I felt like our last meeting focused on a lot of the sort of negativity, but I wanted you to know so you didn't feel blindsided in regards to some of the issues and concerns I had had uh, relative to my prior position. Um, so I, 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 and I don't know how, that's how I took it. So I don't know if you guys took it that way, but I just wanted to put it out there that, you know, I, I felt like I had to, you know, I could easily have come in and said, you know, well, there was a change in boards and, you know, I was on the outs, but I, I thought it was important for you guys to know where I was coming from in regards to that piece of it. Can, can I add something, Angie? Certainly. Um, I, th I think that if, that if that was a case, we would never have brought you back to begin with. Oh, oh thank you. So, okay. um, I, uh, and again, one advantage of working with a board that's been elected multiple terms is that we understand all that stuff because we see it around us i mean right. i mean you know we have friends i mean we have friends in other communities that other you know we, we in in we we've you know we've had town administrators we understand town administrators move we understand so but i don't think um actually i didn't think our i didn't take it i thought it was refreshing that you address some of your oh. some of those things that occurred um and i i thought that was refreshing actually because to to me it's 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 who we are you know we all um and we understand municipal municipal government we understand that so i i would say conversely i thought we had a a good a good interview um and we wouldn't have gone to the second step if we didn't think you were and the other and the other members that we invited back were very capable very capable administrators so thank you for applying thank you thank you i appreciate it um that being said i, I guess to sort of late since you in your budget process and sit, are you systematically trying to build free cash or is that just Incidental. Scott, so, here's a softball. Thing. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, set right up for you. So, not necessarily <laughs> build free cash. Okay. So, we have a free cash <clears throat> guidelines adopted maybe a decade ago, uh, policy, and we try to move about one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars, leave it on the table forward for the coming year. We use uh, the difference in three categories. So we'll take, uh, of the difference, you'll take that first 150 to 200, set it aside, take a piece of that for uh, our OPEB payment. We have an OPEB fund. We fund part of that from free cash. We fund part of the operating budget from free cash. We try not to be reliant on it in total. And then the last piece is either capital or capital stabilization and warrant articles all fall in kind of the same bucket and that last percentage moves a little bit year on year so uh, we've had some spikes in free cash uh, one year was an accounting issue we had passed uh, we had actually passed a capital stabilization override so not only did we establish capital stabilization we actually passed an override to fund it directly so like we take great credit for that <laughs> however the accountant didn't move the money into the bucket the first year. And so that's where you saw a big spike. We went from like 425 to 650, boink. It was like, well, well that's easy, we could do that. Um, there was a year, I think probably, we could talk about free cash on the Wayback Machine, when you got a, a new accountant and figured out that the state had been under piloting us for a long time and we had a million dollars in free cash. Yeah. And it was like, where'd that come from? Well, that was just a good accountant who just went, yeah. no, that, you know, you, you guys have been just, you know, letting them beat you up for a decade. So anyway, push that. But we usually run, uh, we have been in the last four or five years 
in the high 300s to low 400s. And, and, and again, it's not, a, it's not a policy, a driver on that. It, we, we focus a great deal on operating revenues as opposed to expenses. And we try not to play catch up uh, with, with the, the expense side. We try to make sure there's enough revenue that we can send out the management letter and say, or the select board's letter and say, here is what we're expecting in free cash. Here is what we're expecting in, in growth. Here is two and a half. This is the cap that we have to stay under. So anyway, we, we, spent, a lot of, we spent a lot of time. We spent as much time on the revenue side of the budget yeah. as we do on the expenditure side of the budget. And, 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 I think we, we, and we've done it for now for a long time. Right. And, and, and we, we have all of our departments, for the most part, understand, understand that. When, when we have had tough, um, tough budgets, um, we have, um, we look at, or, or some look at free cash as a way of solving a, the problem. And it's like, well, if we use six hundred thousand dollars of free cash this year to to do our operator, and it's non-reoccurring, what's going to happen next year? Mm -hmm. So we just postpone, just postpone the problem. Right. So we try. Okay. So we try to understand. Um, so when we when we looked historically at free cash, we saw that we were because um, we're very. All, all, our revenue forecast, we're very, we look at five-year trends, we look at seven-year trends, we look at 10-year trends, we look at three-year trends, but we're, we're, we're cautious, we're very conservative. We understand that we may, you know, we may end up with free cash, but how do you spend that free cash? And, and so what, what we did, the finance committee and, and, the, and the board, mainly through Scott, came together and they put together a policy that that says, okay, we we are pretty sure we're gonna end up with free cash in the every year. This is how we're gonna use it so that when some when you somebody we're we're six hundred thousand dollars short and somebody says, Well we have six hundred thousand in free cash, it's like not exactly. Right. Yeah, right. And and so we have a policy and and it works. Um, be, because now, now when we look at the end of the year at the revenue, when we look at the budget and we have, when we look at our offsets, we go, okay, we have 325,000 that we're using from, um, free cash. Yep. And somebody from, from our town floor may says, well, that's a, that's, that's not enough or that's too much. He said, no, it's the number that we have used historically for the last 10 years. To offset the buddy, uh, the budget, and we're going to be—it's it, reoccurring, and and we can we can afford to use this much from free cash, mm -hmm. and it seems to make our budget process more under, it, it uh, It's easier for people to, and us to understand. Right. So that's that's mm -hmm. why. And Scott's right. Um, in twenty years, eighteen years ago, we had a tremendous spike right. in in free cash. Well, guess what? We knew it was going to happen because the previous board had never looked at um, the total revenue package. They only looked at they only looked at the expenditure side, and all of a sudden they didn't look at all the local receipts and other things. Right. They didn't add that in the budget. Expenditures are only half your budget. So we knew it was there. So so we were telling the we were telling the finance committee eighteen months in advance. Right. Just so you guys know, we're going to have. And, and Bruce Gordon, bless his soul, um, he was one of our finance in in round numbers, Tom. Round numbers. Yeah, that, that was, <laughs> it was it was like uh, Bruce. Just that so you style, it's like you know round. <laughs> yeah, but just so you know, Bruce, they're, they're, we're going to have a million dollars in free cash, and it's like when we picked them up off the floor at the dairy <laughs> market. Right. Um, and he said, "Well, how does that happen?" He said, "Well, last year no one figured the the local receipt. It was it was." A, 22 years ago, board of selectmen. Right. So we knew it was coming. Right. But now that we have the policy, it seems to work better. And when we put it out there, then then we people can argue about the policy. Mm -hmm. But then they but they're if they're arguing about the policy, they know then next year 
it's not reoccurring. So we're just right. delaying it for a year. So if I could piggyback on that, one of the best elements of um, the of the town in general, the population who, who participate in local government is, it's taken a decade plus, but they, they can look at those sheets and, and it's completely transparent. It is, that's how much we're gonna, we plan on using moving forward. This is how much we're planning on allocating in these three or four buckets. And, and they've con- the conditioning is completely like, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't 10 years ago, people were saying, what's certified free cash? Mm-hmm. Now it's just a handout at the town meeting. It's like, there yeah, it is. One more component. And here, here's, here's, here's the allocation. We give the complete revenue stream to revenue projection, as well as the prior four years. So we have a five-year window that everybody at town meeting has, and it's on the website. So it's, it's you know, convey complete and clear information, done. Like, so it removes some of the noise. That's not to say that we have not had changes on town meeting floor, changes of heart amongst members of the board, the finance committee, to move within the framework of, of that guideline, but staying inside that framework, I think has made for much better budgeting uh, over the last decade. Even when the budgets have been really hard, even when things fail, override fails, you come right back and say, okay, that's the budget. Let's start those reductions. Here they come. So. I think that transparency has been beneficial to uh, the electorate in general and to the department heads who can count on it. They can go, okay, I'm not. Go, it's not the school of fish approach year to year. <laughs> like, oh God, sharks. That's a good and, uh, right. It's not that. It's not that approach. I think that communication has been uh, equally important uh, as the as the policy has. Clear, concise, consistent. It's just numbers. So. Sorry, we really went down. That's all right. That's all right. We're kind of, we kind of wonk and nerd out on that. Yeah, we're walking out exactly, Uh nerding out a little bit on that one. Yep. (sighs) I actually ended up in when I was doing my research for here called. um, No, I want to call it frog, frog, but it's the. Fr cog. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because your master plan. Is 1971? Mm. Four, four or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that that it, it well that the the master plan um, was done in 1970, early 70s, and it was uh, done by the gentleman that who worked on it. They contracted with Phil Her mm-hmm. um, that did the master plan. Um, but as a document, we, we've actually have not looked at a total rewrite of the master plan, but most of the sections have been rewritten. So we've, we've done um, the housing plan. Housing plan, open, open space. space. We've right. done open space. We've done we've recreation. Done we've yeah. done conservation. Planning. We've done planning. So, so we've done all of the segments of a master plan. You just didn't put them all together yet. But we haven't done them as a as a singular document. Even the financial plan. Mm-hmm. Financial plan. Yeah, actually we have. Yeah, right. Yep. So we we have so we so someone's got to collate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in our free time. Right, right, put it in the format. Right? Well, we've been busy putting furniture together lately. That's Scott. true. That's right. But uh, no, well, the, town, the town that's clerk. The question. town clerk. <laughs> you know, but. Uh, the town clerk's putting furniture together? No, we, we, were, well, putting furniture we were putting together furniture together for, for the town clerk. Yeah. Yeah. Or the select Small room. town. We all have to pitch oh, in yeah, one yeah. way Small or the town. other. Yeah. Yep. But, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah we, we all do a lot of things. Yeah, but, yeah, so it's a good question about the master plan. And, and so we have it, we, Scott's right, we need some, someday, and very soon, we need to correlate that. Right, so um, you can call it the master plan. Right. In, the, in, the, in one other meeting, to, to Tom's point, one other uh, meeting recently, the discussion about the master plan came up, and it would be, it would be nice to drill back on that and see, because it's got, it's got essentially a generation right now under, under it. How did it play out? Yeah. Yep. Just because it was a plan and you implemented the stages, were, were the goals met? How did it work out? And also, too, 
you know, whenever you draft policy, if you can go back to this is where we said we needed to go, you know, and it right. moves it forward right. with sort of a, a unified vision. Right. Sometimes I wonder about mass. I, I wonder about looking too far. We, we you know, we, we, we try to plan for, you know, like we built the library. The library theoretically has to last for 40 or 50 years. Right. Of population growth and volume and all that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, but is that, I mean, is that, do we look too far in the future? Mm -hmm. that's, a fair, that's a fair question when you talk about in the context of master and master planning, right? right. You're not going to change your land mass. We're not going to buy Hadley. Yeah, right. We could, but we're, we're choosing not to. Right? Right? <laughs> but, well, you know, but, is, is, but, but those, how we do things is different. Right, oh, exactly. Well, right? You and, just and, look at. And, and, think, and think about it. If, if you, 20 years ago, if you were, you were looking at something and for heating, you 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 would probably turn, change or do something totally different today. Well, I was today. just going to say that's a perfect you know, example. Of how in, 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 and in my world, what in in my world, uh, a distributive <clears throat> distribution heat heating system mm -hmm. was a cat's meow. Right. And now it's, it's becoming decentralized. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. It's it's All like in, in, now. In, in, in you looking at car, uh, carbon net, net neutral, yep. so they're getting they're getting away from burning of any fossil fuels. Yep. We're looking at we're looking at heating buildings from the sewer. Yep, right. The waste heat from sewers. So, so some, be, oh, yeah. So so you you look at thirty years. Right. I don't really know what's going to happen in thirty years. So okay. why are we looking thirty? We should maybe only looking ten. Right. And if you look at what's been infilled. Uh, and updated under the guise of, or chapters of the master plan, it, it is because that's dynamic and needed change and needed to be adapted. But it's a, it's a chapter in the big book. Well, kind of to your point, Tom. I, honestly, anything past ten years is just a thought exercise. Fair. Because yeah. I mean, you look at we have we face issues now that we never could have contemplated in our wildest dreams back when that last master plan. I mean, you look at like ransomware attacks on sure. municipal facilities. Nobody would have ever thought that. I mean, we basically just had ARPANET back then, right. let alone right. you know or anything else. So. Master plan had nothing to do with cell tower sighting. No, exactly. <laughs> right, right. No, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> well, and cell now like, are probably going to be gone in five years. They're going to be gone, right? And so we'll you know a whole bunch of other things. Wow, well, I wouldn't hold my breath there, but they will be gone someday. Yeah, but <clears throat> five, don't five G is going to take a long time. Dirigibles. Dirigibles. Dir Dir oh, yeah. <laughs> Floating across the sky. Satellites. <clears throat> Elon Musk. Well, Elon said, Elon said, yeah. They're going to yeah. block the sky out for us. Nice yeah. guy. Except Big. once they all. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. But yeah, that, that's a good point, though. But I, and I think. So you started us off. You had no idea where we're headed here, right? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm fascinated in regards to just actually I'm observing you, the way you guys interact. Yeah. Well, we, we don't have anything better to do in our life. <laughs> <laughs> right, Chris? That's right. Up. Yeah, yeah. Thumbs up back there. there you go. I think we've been busy doing all the stuff in the plan. That's fair. Know, and I think spending more time on that than trying to put together. We're kind of more focused on results than worrying about a shiny book at the end of it, you know? I think that's, and honestly, it takes, um, some might say that this is uh, the downsides of democracy. Oh, you don't get things done fast, but you know, something in the end, you end up with a better sure. product because, I mean, we go back and forth and, you know, we, tr we kind of go out of our way to get different ideas and opinions because, you know, we all need to be poked out of our safety zone. You kind of alluded to that in one aspect, and that works with, you know, different opinions and things like that because no, I think if any, if everything that's going on now doesn't convince you that there's no party or group that has a lock on all the best ideas, and if they did, they would have resolved the issues when they had a lock on power at one point or another. and. Sometimes you just got to look outside your sphere and grab something that you wouldn't think of, and right. it works. So. <clears throat> And thank you for taking me down that path. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they feel, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> that dark path. <laughs> uh, you think about some of those initiatives, the big planning efforts around, was it EO485 or 508, whatever the hell that was. Mm -hmm. So much energy and effort went into that. And you look at it now and go, why did we do that? So anyway. Yeah.
no. Governor Salucci. Well, yeah, I, yeah, 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 I get it. <laughs> well, actually, the the other question I had is in regards to sort of initiatives. Mm -hmm. What what initiatives do you have? I, I know you, we talked about you know some of the projects that mm -hmm. you want, but what initiatives are you looking at um, for the? We've had a continued uh, energy reduction initiative for the last decade, 5% reduced per year. And we've yep. been doing that through our other municipal expenditures, uh, types of use, grants, DOER grants, green community grants. And we can actually look at that and see those energy lines. What was the program uh, where we were dead? It wasn't ESOP, but it was close. Anyway, E something. 418, yeah. EO 418. EO 418 is the one. But this, this was where we just finished the 10 year window with uh, yeah. energy management company on two of our buildings and yeah. hit the goals each time. Siemens, it was, right? Yeah, Siemens. it was E something. Anyway, you, you buy the debt, the debt buys down. The, that's all. So that's one initiative that is continuing. Um, our open space and rec uh, plan uh, is underway and rolling, as, as demonstrated out here. And, and then our housing plan was just recertified uh, two years, recertified two years ago by the DHCD. And we were notified today that we have reached our 10.08 or 10.65 units of affordable okay. housing. So oh, excellent. We still have we still have ways to go because it's concentrated in two different areas, mm -hmm. uh, but we want to we want to expand on that using the housing production plan. So that's another one. Um, so those kinds of initiatives are yeah. are are active and ongoing. Planning has a steady stream of initiatives. It had to, we had to react to large scale ground mount solar, and we did it. it was, I think the people who put their heads together on that did an exceedingly <clears throat> good job. Yep. Mm -hmm planning, conservation, writing the bylaw, educating the town uh, during uh, annual town meeting, and now you see some smaller of the large scale ground mounts here in, in town, but they're specific. The town at the end of the buyout of the one by the school uh, will essentially be a net zero consumer in that will generate everything that we have, that we consume. So that's five, five or six more years of, of buy down on, on that on that debt, uh, and then we have the opportunity to to own and operate. So, and all those things, it, it it's similar it, similar to revisiting the master plan. You know, think of them as initiatives because you're kind of in the throw. Mm -hmm. It's like making sauce, right? Yeah. It's like, do I need more spice right now, or just let it simmer a little bit and get to the end and talk about and the next thing, thing, right? So, I, I think. We also tend to go for some of the unglamorous things, like like a lot of stuff that we've done, is saving operating costs, like the energy and stuff yeah. like that. That we just got our first streetlight bill of the whole year. Exactly. Right. And we're constantly and looking for ways right. to improve process and procedure, and kind of like you were saying earlier, like take a lot of the noise out, so we're not going through these wild budget gyrations and things like that. I mean, we know there's going to be stuff that's going to blindside us and that you have to expect that. But you want to try to manage as much as you can and have as much policy and procedure and so that we're relying less on politics and things like that. You remove the subjectivity out of it. Yep, exactly. That's a good point. <clears throat> um, I think I had a question, but I... We talked you right out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, it was in regards to how, like how receptive or is the community or you to um, cannabis, the cannabis industry, or is it something that um, you know? We haven't been approached. I don't yeah. know. No. I, don't, I don't think we've really. I mean, we we uh, planning and zoning has got it squared away. We, we know that. Part. Yeah, we prepared for it, but I think the town voted overall in favor of it. But I think you know, I think there's so many going up. In so many other places, I mean, it's like it's like anything. There's going to be a huge spike in activity, and from and a market the bankruptcies will start exactly. And from <laughs> a marketplace standpoint, right now it's right. actually a very protected market because it is not legalized nationally. So, while you've seen some larger conglomerates purchasing in, everything still has to be created and consumed within the state. So, I think. The, there's going to be one phase of the market, and then once that opens up nationally, then there's going to be a whole. Then you'll start seeing huge consolidation, just like any other business life cycle. So, like the solo, I think yeah. we, I think, to, to our to the the board's great credit, they've. 
done all the homework and everything ahead of time or prepared for it so that we're not caught like we see some communities that you know trying to be more reactionary we tried to be a lot more proactive with that and then it's it served us well Well, it's All been right. a treat talking with you again. Oh and, appreciate uh, it. Thanks for Thank coming. You know. I really appreciate you making the time to come back and <coughs> grill us with these tough questions. Because, <laughs> or worse yet, listen to us ramble on. <laughs> so again, uh, our process, you're the last of, this, last of the second interviews. Uh, we have it on our agenda on Monday night uh, for discussion. Uh, it, the goal would be to uh, come up with a name of one of the three candidates. Uh, and then uh, extend the offer, begin contract negotiations. We don't have a timeline in mind to fill in the position because we're already late. So <laughs> <laughs> just as, as quick as possible is fine, but all with, with the, all of the due diligence that the town warrants uh, um, and puts, puts us in this position to do to bring the best possible candidate to do the best possible things for Perfect. a good town. Yes, there you go. Good. Okay. Thank you. That Thank you. said, is there a motion? Uh, motion. Second. There's a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Call us out at 7.42. I, I did an hour before my watch. It looked wrong last time. It was like 9. And, and the candidate was like, hmm. What? Yeah, right. It's exactly yeah, right. Oh, is that? Thanks so much, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'll get it. I didn't realize